Hope you're having a great Saturday. You know, we showed you part one of my recent interview with famed psychologist Dr. Jordan Peterson. He's also a best-selling author. We talked about education and the mission to fight woke in America and around the world. Tonight, part two, the key to happiness. But I think you have an obligation to make the most out of life, and I think people get the wrong uh, definition on happiness. Mm -hmm. What is happiness? People, happiness is not high five and necessarily smiling. It's having a mission. Well, it's also not the gratification of immediate desire. Like, there's actually two forms of positive emotion, eh? There's, there's the emotion that you feel, let's say, after having a good meal, after a Thanksgiving dinner, and that's just satiation, okay? But satiation puts you to sleep, right? Now, it's pleasant because you don't need anything, yeah. but it isn't, it isn't motivating. Motivation comes in a pursuit. You have to be pursuing a goal, and so then you have to figure out what your goal is. It's, and it's not optional. You know, the other thing for people to think about is, well, you know, you might say, well, I'm the sort of person that doesn't plan. It's like, well, that's because you're afraid. That's part of the reason, and you should overcome that. But it's also the case that if you don't have your plan, someone else has a plan for you. And whatever responsibility you abdicate will be taken up by tyrants, and whatever direction you don't provide for yourself will be provided by other people who don't have your best interest in mind. That's how it works. One of the things I think is universal is there's nothing better than helping somebody. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you can do when you have a family on a regular basis, you're training, you're solving problems, bring them to practice, bring, get them to a better school, go and doing your best to, be, mm -hmm. to make an effort to be a good parent. Mm -hmm. And that leads me to what would be an absence in my life without a family. It would just mm -hmm. be, it would almost be like not having uh, an appendage. And now I also mm -hmm. see in America more and more people having less kids or no kids decide yeah. not to get married yeah. or decide to be childless. And I respect everybody who makes that decision, that's fine. But do you think it points to a bigger story in the world today, in this country today? Well, one of the points that I've put forward that has become rather markedly popular is the notion that the meaning that sustains you in times of trouble will be found as a consequence of adopting responsibility. See, and this is another thing conservatives haven't been very good at communicating to young people because conservatives tend to be somewhat finger wagging in their morality. You should do this. Right. And you know, fair enough, there are things you should do, but there's a better story there, and the story is the one that you started to outline, which is, well, if you look at this, if you look at what you have at hand when times get rough, let's say, which they certainly will, you'll find that most of the genuine self-esteem that you feel and the cessation of anxiety and the pursuit of happiness is a consequence of bearing responsibility. Right? You bear responsibility for yourself over the long run, for your wife or your husband over the long run, for your family, for your community. And that's a reciprocal interaction, so you'll get paid back by the people you're helping for doing that, but it also is an intrinsic source of meaning. you don't do it for meaning. that reason, too. No, no, you, yeah. do it, you do it because everything works if you do that. So the other thing, see, we thought for a long time, and this is actually can be laid at the feet of psychologists to some degree, that your happiness or even your mental stability is somehow an internal thing. It's psychological. But that's not exactly right. Your mental health and your happiness, so your freedom from anxiety and your happiness, is dependent on the harmony that you establish in, within the systems that you're embedded. So you can't be sane and happy without a long-term partner. And the data on that is quite clear, because married people are a lot happier than unmarried people. Okay? You can't be sane and together within a couple without having a family. It might be your parents and your siblings, but it should also be children, because that you have to knit that together. And then your family can't function without a functioning neighborhood, and then a community, and then a state. And the sanity is the harmony between all those levels. It's not something you carry around inside you and it's, it's partly key to sanity being embedded at all those levels because none of us are capable in and of ourselves of regulating ourselves like when you and I are even talking right now the communication regulates we regulate each other with the communication right. right you're saying things I'm saying things we're trying to keep it interesting we're trying to move forward you know in a productive we're both manner. stimulated and intrigued exactly well right right so we have a container which is the goal and then there's interest being manifested and if we do that right we pull everyone in well that's a good situation right and then your emotions are well regulated when all of that is happening that key to that is responsibility
You're a deep thinker. I'm wondering, do you set time aside to think? Will you just wait for a gap in your day and stare out the window? Like, where do you get these thoughts and conclusions from? Because I also think one of your 12 axioms for a happy life, mm -hmm. one of which is you can learn something from everyone you're with. Mm -hmm. So where do you, you don't think you know everything, mm -hmm. but your viewers do and the people that buy tickets do. Where do you have time to make your conclusions and grow as a person and as an intellect? Well, I have podcasts twice a week. And so I'm always listening to someone who's smart because I find podcast guests who have something to say that I want to hear. And so when I talk to them, I have the opportunity for them to teach me. So the audience so, is benefiting and you're benefiting. Absolutely. you know. And, and the good podcast hosts are just learning. And then they bring everyone along for the ride. And that's what I'm trying to do with my podcast. I always invite people from whom I want to hear because I presume they know something I don't. And they do. So that's helpful. And then I write every day. And writing... Writing is the most formal way of thinking, right? Because you have to ask yourself a question. You have to wait for the answers. That's kind of a revelation. Then you have to analyze the answer. And that sort of thinking is extremely useful if you want to lay things out clearly. And lastly, you sound like you have the same issues that everybody has. Of course. Uh, and, yeah. But I think people, that also I helps tell the Jordan Peterson story. I'm trying hard to be successful relaying what I learned, but I'm still dealing with the same stuff. Well, it's important for people to know that people who are successful, let's say, aren't the people who are fortunate enough to have no problems. No one is in the category of fortunate enough to have no problems. People like that don't exist. Everybody deals with aging and death and severe illness. And like, I you, know you dealt with that and your wife at the same time. Yes, yes, and my daughter too, all of us at the same time, and you know, it's the case for everyone. Now, you meet people now and then, and I met lots of people like this in my clinical practice, who have so many things going wrong at the same time that, you know, it's just an unutterable catastrophe. But the fact that there are people like that, and there are people who are clearly, clearly experiencing higher levels of misfortune, say, than the norm, doesn't mean that the successful people are the ones who have no problems. That's right. just the successful people are the people who keep on going, and, and they're fortunate enough to be able to do that often, to keep on going regardless of what's being thrown at them. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.